As we rolled down Route 19 heading south to Wood Creek, the truck was filled with silence. We hadn't ate since early the morning before we left our house. After the events had transpired at the golf course, no one had an appetite or much to say. I kept reliving what I thought my father's final hours were spent like, over and over, again and again in my head. Fortunately for us, the road was a rural one. Every quarter of a mile or so, we'd run across a broken-down vehicle. We passed a few farms where cattle had been shot and the meat harvested for consumption. Horses being stolen, now being the main source of transportation. We were returning to the life our ancestors from 200 years ago thrived in. Anyone still alive today wasn't thriving for the most part. This generation had grown soft and weak. I imagine the die-off would be fast. My youngest asked, how much longer? We had approximately 12 miles left on this journey. 12 miles could be 30 minutes or 30 hours depending on what we encountered. The girls would play I Spy to help pass the time. My wife was still behind the wheel. I rode shotgun, always scanning ahead with my binoculars. Had to be close to 3 p.m. by now, judging by the sun. It was unusually cold for mid-August. Wouldn't be long before the leaves would start changing. We all knew what that meant. Winter would be coming soon. Northeast winters were never enjoyable when the grid was up. Now with no electricity, I was worried about making it through till spring. That thought always weighed heavily on the back of my mind, even though we still had another full month of summer left. The last time we visited Wood Creek was Labor Day weekend last year. We were supposed to rough it for three days in a tent, but after 48 hours of heavy rain, my wife and kids threw the towel in. The second night, they actually slept in the car. This time, we wouldn't be able to pack up and go home. For this was now going to be our permanent home for the foreseeable future. I had turned around to join in a game of I Spy with the kids, taking my eyes off the road for less than 45 seconds. My wife slammed on the brakes. We all slid forward. It was a roadblock less than 100 yards away. I pulled the binoculars to my eyes. Oh shit. There were Russian soldiers. Two huge transport trucks blocking the lanes with at least a dozen soldiers visible. My wife began to panic. What do we do? I said, turn us around. Get us the hell out of here. They were commanding us to exit the vehicle over a microphone. This was a battle I couldn't win today. I was outnumbered, outgunned, and overpowered. There wasn't enough room to turn around. She threw it in reverse, and we be began retreating. I still had the binoculars on the soldiers when I saw them separate, and one stepped forward with an RPG. He had his sights set directly on us. I told my wife, step on it. She lost control and jackknifed the Bronco in the trailer. I knew it was coming. Everyone out, I yelled. Get out now. That was the last thing I remembered before the explosion blew the Bronco and the trailer to pieces. I awoke in the ditch alongside the road. Where's my family? Are they still alive? I looked over. The Bronco was engulfed in flames, upside down. I ran over. The four of them along with the dog, never made it out. My ears were still ringing from the explosion, and I didn't hear the Russian soldiers approaching until I had turned looking for my rifle. There was nowhere to be found. All I had for the incoming enemy was a pistol. I raised it, began firing, yelling, No! I felt a hand grab my shoulder and shake me. Wake up! Wake up! You're sweating. You're yelling in your sleep. Are you okay, my wife asked. Christ. It was just a dream, I muttered. Relief. 
She asked what I was dreaming about. I looked at her, then back at the girls in the back seat. Just a nightmare, I said. It all felt so real. Where are we, I asked. My wife responded about two miles out. I was drenched in a heavy sweat. Luckily, it had been an uneventful journey while I was sleeping and dreaming of the attack. We passed a McDonald's that my grandmother and I would stop at every time we came down when I was just a kid. Even in rural America, McDonald's had been looted out with broken windows. I didn't know what to expect when we arrived at the entrance. I decided we'd stash our vehicle and supplies up off-road and walked the last mile in. The trailer was already covered in a camo tarp. We'd cover the Bronco with tree branches and leaves. Our ever-growing number of firearms and a small stash of ammo I'd bury a half mile from the campsite. We could never be too careful. You never knew who you may encounter in SHTF. I would stay armed with my AR-15, and my wife carried the 9mm Beretta. The second AR, the Mosin, the Remington 700, four shotguns and the three sidearms would be buried away for safekeeping. All three of the girls now carried knives on them as well. The Bronco and trailer were covered and hidden in a large group of pines. We set out for the final mile walk to a place where I'd spent the majority of my childhood summers. By now, Bear was so used to us and was such a part of the family, we didn't bother to leash him. Wood Creek had multiple cabins, and I'd estimate well over 200 campers. There was a huge house where the owners to the site lived at year-round. There was a rec hall for special events multiple swimming ponds, a general store that sold supplies, miniature golf course, volleyball and basketball courts, and multiple playgrounds throughout. I've been coming here off and on for over 30 years ever since I was born. My parents had a site when they were still married, my grandparents, and aunt and uncle too. Like I said before, my mother returned and spent the last five plus years of her life here. I planned on being welcomed with open arms. Boy, was I about to be proven wrong. We stopped so I could bury the bag of ammo and guns. Began to make our final approach. At the entrance, I could see three campers lined up, blocking the road. On top of each camper was an armed guard. I couldn't believe what my eyes were seeing. It was a scene more reminiscent out of Woodbury from The Walking Dead. There was a second entrance on the back side of the campsite, about a mile away. I figured that entrance too would be blocked with an armed patrol. We gathered under a bridge that crossed over the creek that winded through Wood Creek. It was decision time. Should we sneak in through the woods? Should I approach alone? Should we all approach? I wasn't expecting an armed resistance with a blocked entrance. By now, my family was cold, tired, and hungry. If I walked up on the patrol, there was a chance I could be shot at first sight. I decided for them to stay here, hide out under the bridge. I'd go it alone and take my chances. We've come too far to turn back now. The nightmare I had could become reality if we remained out on the road any longer. I had a walkie. My wife had one too. I'd hold down the button so they could hear everything I could. At the first sign of trouble, they were to retreat back to the Bronco and get out of Dodge. My wife said, we can't leave you behind. I said, you can and you will. If it all falls to shit, I'll meet you back at the McDonald's where my grandmother brought me to. You wait no longer than 30 minutes for me to show. I'm not asking you. I'm ordering you. I was going to take my chances, sneak in, rather than walk up to the armed guards and leave my life to some trigger-finger-happy 19-year-old kid. I promised my family 
This was not the end, but the beginning. I'll secure our safety and get us in there, I promise you. If I could just make it to the owner's house, Mrs. Eddy, everything would be okay. After her husband passed, her and her son Billy ran the day-to-day -day operations. Mrs. Eddy was pushing 90. Billy had to be closing in on 60 by now. The same family had lived and ran the campsite since its beginning over 50 years ago. My mother had worked in the general store. She often helped Billy empty out the bathroom tanks on the campers. Everyone knew my mother, Mary, there. I set out and would sneak through the densely populated woods of pines that surrounded Wood Creek. Once again, I said goodbye to my family, kissing and hugging them. I hoped this was the last time I'd have to leave them. All of a sudden, Bear immediately took off and started barking. I had no choice now but to run after him and follow him. That's when I heard a gunshot go off. So much for sneaking into Wood Creek now. <laughs>